So levitation is one of the most persistent ideas across history and culture. It appears in ancient spiritual traditions. We see it pop up in religious claims, and we even have modern day accounts of levitation. But what really takes my interest to the next level is the scientific experiments that have actually achieved levitation. So what's the truth behind levitation? Is it an ancient secret? a natural ability we have lost, or just a trick of perception. To attempt to answer this question, we are going to look at the historical and religious accounts of levitation, modern-day claims, current scientific experiments proving levitation can happen, and lastly, we'll look at the symbolic and psychological meaning of levitation. But be sure to stick around to the end where I share the inspiration for this video, and it's something that I'm very curious to have your feedback on. So let's get started with historical accounts of levitation. Some of these accounts are of deeply respected historical figures, and what's most amazing is that they have multiple witnesses describing what they saw. Were these exaggerations, illusions, or something we don't understand? Let's begin with St. Joseph of Cupertino, who lived between 1603 and 1663 in Italy. He was known as the Flying Friar. Joseph was a Franciscan monk who reportedly levitated hundreds of times, often in front of crowds. Witnesses included nobles, fellow monks, and even Pope Urban VIII. Some claim he would levitate and rise several feet off the ground and stay there for several minutes at a time. Church records confirm these accounts, though his acts of levitation were seen as both miraculous and troubling. Joseph believed that his acts of levitation were an act of God occurring during deep states of prayer. Then there is St. Teresa of Avila. She lived from 1515 to 1582 in Spain. She was a deeply influential Christian mystic, whom described feeling so overwhelmed by divine presence that she would lift off the ground. In her own writings, she mentioned that she was frightened by the experience and even prayed for it to stop. Other nuns and priests claimed to witness her rising off the floor during prayer, leaving one to wonder that perhaps intense spiritual focus is the answer to levitation. Then there are a group of people that were levitating in Eastern spiritual traditions. In particular, we have Hindu texts that describe Lagima, a city or special ability said to make the body weightless, resulting in levitation. Western explorers in the 19th and 20th century reported seeing monks appear to hover and move in impossible ways. Some traditions suggest that breath control, meditation, and sound vibrations could create an altered state of physicality leading to this type of supernatural state. And let's not forget the occult and esoteric world. We have the floating masters of the East. These Taoist sages in ancient China were said to have mastered qi or life energy and were able to achieve extraordinary feats, including levitation. Stories describe these monks as being able to walk on the air, stand on a single reed, or ascend mountains without climbing. Some Chinese legends suggest that particular meditation techniques could allow the body to interact with forces beyond gravity. And then there is Count Saint Germain, who was a mysterious European figure who was rumored to be an alchemist who never aged and possessed secret knowledge of physics, energy, and mind control. Some occult traditions claim that he could manipulate the structure of matter itself and, as a result, had mastered personal levitation. He was also said to vanish from locked rooms, appear in multiple places at once, and defy gravity during deep meditation. Then there's a group of alchemists who weren't interested in necessarily turning lead into gold, but were more fascinated by the idea of philosophical ascension and to have mastery over natural forces. Some entries describe this rarefication of the body, which was considered a process where people could reduce their material density and become light enough to float. Hermetic mystics believe that understanding the balance of the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, 
could allow a body to overcome gravity. Could these just be symbolic metaphors for spiritual enlightenment, or did they hint at practical energy techniques? Often levitation is not considered a standalone ability, but truly a side effect of other heightened mental or physical states, such as deep trance states, being able to alter one's bioelectric fields, and the ability to have control of mind over matter. But across time and space, there is no shortage of stories of levitation. And after examining just a few of the available cases, there are some patterns that emerge. The first is that we see an altered state of consciousness. Many levitation reports occur during deep meditation, ecstatic prayer, or trance states. Could it be that shifts in brain activity alter how we perceive or interact with our environment? The other thing was that it was witnessed by others. Unlike solitary paranormal claims, many historical accounts of levitation were seen by multiple people, both skeptics and believers. Does this suggest that there's something physical happening here or a form of mass perception shift? And lastly, there seems to be a common thread of spiritual and philosophical meaning. In nearly every tradition, levitating represents elevation, enlightenment, or breaking free from the material world. While these historical accounts are fascinating, they raise an important question. Are there still people today who claim to defy gravity? I mean, if it happened in the past, surely it's still happening today, right? Some modern occultists, theophysists, and secret societies claim that levitation is still possible. Let's explore two categories of modern-day claims before diving into our current scientific understanding of levitation. First up, let's take a look at something called yogic flying. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the founder of Transcendental Meditation, taught that advanced meditation could lead to a higher state of consciousness and influence physical reality. In order to accomplish yogic flying, practitioners enter a deep state of meditation. There are, in fact, three stages. The first is a form of hopping, where the practitioner bounces while seated in a cross-legged lotus position. The second is hovering, where supposedly, for a moment, there is suspension in the air. And then the last is sustained flight, where in its highest form, full levitation is claimed to be possible. Our next group is illusionists. Many illusionists have mastered the art of levitation, however, using concealed wires, hidden supports, magnetic platforms, and optical tricks to create the stunning visual effect. Now, these performers might be entertainment-based, but they really do highlight humanity's deep fascination with transcending gravity. Let's go over a few famous magicians who have pulled this feat off. First, we have Harry Keller. He lived from 1849 to 1922, and he was one of the earliest magicians to perform the act called the Levitation of Princess Karnak. This was a stage trick where an assistant appeared to float in midair without visible support. Up next, we have Houdini. He was famous for debunking fraudulent levitation claims while also performing the illusions like the floating lady. David Copperfield was known for his flying illusion where he appeared to soar across stage, flip midair, and pass through hoops to prove no wires were used. This remains one of the most convincing levitation illusions in history. And lastly, Chris Angel. He performed street levitation stunts, appearing to float several feet off the ground with no visible support. These tricks were later revealed to rely on clever angles, hidden props, and audience control. Throughout history, people have reported feats of levitation, while today illusionists replicate the impossible. Could past accounts of levitation have been misinterpretations, or were they tapping into something real? something we've forgotten how to access. Human levitation is still scientifically unproven. That being said, researchers have been able to successfully levitate objects and even living creatures. We're going to take a look at five ways in which science has made the impossible possible. First up, we have magnetic levitation. 
By using strong superconducting magnets, they are able to repel objects against gravity, creating stable levitation. This technology relies on magnetic fields and superconducting materials cooled to extremely low temperatures to achieve frictionless movement and stable suspension. The most famous example of this is the Shanghai Maglev train. This opened in 2004 and is the fastest commercial train in the world, reaching speeds of 268 miles per hour. It operates using electromagnetic suspension, where powerful superconducting magnets keep the train floating above the track, eliminating friction. This allows for ultra-smooth, high-speed travel, demonstrating the power of magnetic levitation at scale. Next, we have acoustic levitation, using sound to defy gravity. It works by using high-frequency sound waves, which will create pressure nodes that can suspend objects in mid-air. It's used in laboratories to handle delicate substances without contamination. It works well for small objects, but currently not powerful enough to levitate humans. I'll let you know if anything changes. Next, we have diamagnetic levitation. Diamagnetism is a property of certain materials that causes them to create a weak magnetic field in the opposite direction of an implied external magnetic field. When a strong enough magnetic field is applied, these materials experience a repulsive force from the magnet. In the case of biological materials like water, which makes up most of a frog's body, for example, this repulsive force can be strong enough to counteract gravity, resulting in levitation. And in 2000, scientists in Netherlands successfully levitated a frog using a strong magnetic field. This frog floated weightlessly, mimicking conditions of zero gravity. Humans are also mostly made of water, so in theory, a strong enough magnetic field could levitate a person. However, this would require intense magnetic fields far beyond what is safe for humans. Photophoretic levitation occurs when light heats up one side of an object more than the other. It creates a lifting force that can counteract gravity. The effect causes ultra-light materials to float when exposed to focused light. Scientists at the University of Pennsylvania developed a nano cardboard, an incredibly thin, lightweight material that levitates using only light. This discovery could lead to new propulsion methods for exploring Earth's upper atmosphere. And last but certainly not least, let's take a look at plasma levitation. Plasma is the fourth state of matter consisting of charged ions and free electrons. These charged particles can generate strong electromagnetic fields. In plasma levitation experiments, these electrostatic forces created by the plasma can counteract gravity. This can lead to the levitation of certain objects within the plasma field. So what is a plasma field? A plasma field refers to the region in which the plasma's charged particles create an electromagnetic environment. The field interacts with objects placed in it, applying electrostatic repulsion or attraction, depending on the charges involved, which can result in levitation. Scientists have successfully levitated liquid droplets above a plasma field by applying a voltage exceeding 50 volts. The electrostatic repulsion caused by the plasma suspended the droplets in mid-air. This research is helping scientists understand how plasma interacts with matter and could potentially lead to new technologies in material handling or propulsion. So are we any closer to levitation? Well, according to the science, we just might be, but to date, no human has been levitated. Let's shift our focus to what levitation might mean symbolically and psychologically. If levitation symbolizes transcendence, freedom, and mastery, it is no wonder why so many people dream about it. Floating or flying in dreams is a common experience, one that reveals insights about our subconscious mind. But what do these dreams really mean? So the impetus for this video was that I had a dream about levitating last night. I was at school, teaching college, and as I was giving a lecture, I just kept floating up, floating up, and it felt so natural. 
But of course, I didn't want to float up in class, so I kept trying to ground myself. But I gave up eventually and just taught the course floating. And then as I was moving between classes, instead of walking, I was floating through the hallways. Very strange. So next, I'm going to tell you about what the common dream interpretations are. And I'm curious to know what you think my dream was all about. Levitation and dreams can be linked to a sense of freedom, breaking free from burdens, restrictions, or the challenges of everyday life. Many believe it represents spiritual growth, a sign of heightened awareness, enlightenment, or an evolving consciousness. Others see it as a reflection of emotional balance, a state of peace, where the dreamer feels weightless and in harmony. But not all floating dreams feel positive. If the levitation is forced or uncontrollable, it might suggest a fear of losing stability or feeling disconnected from reality. Sometimes floating away can symbolize a deep desire to escape, whether from responsibilities, pressure, or something that feels confining and waking life. Whether symbolic or subconscious, levitation and dreams seems to tap into something fundamental, the human desire to transcend, rise above, and break free from limitation. While science has not confirmed human levitation, it has at the very least reminded us to keep questioning what we think is possible and has perhaps inspired some scientific breakthroughs. So what do you think? Is levitation just a metaphor, a subconscious reflection, or a future reality waiting to be unlocked? Thanks so much for joining me. I can't wait to read what you think in the comments below. And until next time, take care.